All right, everyone, did you know? Now, this might come as a surprise to you. Did you know that Jeff Flake is not a fan of Donald Trump? I never would have guessed it from his prior comments, mostly of a weird sorters, time in Congress. Uh, but apparently Jeff Flake really just doesn't like Trump, and he'd, he'd like to remind you of that. He'd like to remind you that he was relevant once, you know, quite some time ago. Uh, he's coming out, actually, he said the other day he was talking. He's like, well, it'd be better if a Democrat wins in 2020. See, he's not in office or seeking office anymore. He was a never-Trump sort of rhino-con. And so he's, he's coming out, and it basically, what I think a lot of these never-Trumpers at this point are doing is they're expecting Trump, number one, to lose, and number two, to implode. And so they're betting against him, and they're saying, well, you know, I can set the stage for potentially uh, big benefits down the road. I'm taking this bet that he'll fail, so I'm going to be like, you know, the Republicans should throw him aside, and then when that doesn't happen, the Democrats, the, the, the Democrats will win, or they should win, or something like that, and, I'm, and they're assuming that Trump will be impeached or something. And they've been betting against him this whole time, and so far they haven't succeeded, which should be telling to them, it's like, Jeff Flake rambles about him, goes silent for a while, and then only after the Mueller report <laughs> basically props up Trump completely does he come out to whine again. Um, not necessarily the best political strategy that I think that he could use, because what ends up happening is that there are still a lot of Republican partisans, and those people don't like in-party fighting. They're like, hey, can we focus on the Democrats for a while? And they're going to look at someone like Jeff Flake, and they're, they're going to weigh him against Trump, I think, and put Trump on top, generally speaking, because he's the presidential figure. Jeff Flake is no longer even a politician. He's been in politics. He was in Congress. He's left. He didn't seek re-election, mainly because he knew that he would lose. There was a very good reason why he didn't. Uh, and, and so now he gets sort of kicked to the side, gets sort of canned by those people. But the thing is, he's struggling to maintain relevancy. And we've seen this sad story as well among politicians throughout time. They get out of office. The political paradigm shifts or something. Uh, they're no longer, you know, the politician they once were. Hillary Clinton's a great example. Clinton spent the first year after losing nonstop talking about the fact that she had lost and was a loser, and blaming everybody else on the sun, uh, under the sun other than herself for that loss. My God, it's the pink hat people, they didn't show up in large enough numbers. The DNC refused to support me. Uh, my, my campaigners didn't work hard enough. Uh, people were fooled. There was Russian bots, Russian propaganda, and stuff like that. And it just started to be cringy. It just started to be, I mean, it wore on people after a while. And they're like, okay, you know, you can give it a rest. You know, time, time heals, uh, heals all wounds and wounds all heals. Why don't you fucking get over it? Jeff Flake, though, isn't even a Hillary Clinton. He's like a, a level B sort of politician, has been in the legislature. Um, he's well known m mainly in respect to Trump. He's well known because the tabloid media took the things that he said while he was in office as a Republican in order to attack Trump. He's not known for anything else. Can you name one piece of legislation authored and proposed by Jeff Flake while he was in office? Can you name, other than the fact that he doesn't like Trump and, and is a Republican, can you name any, any significant uh, proposals that he's made, whether you put him forth or not, any platforms that he has, any ideas that he has, like other than the generic sort of Republican Party platform? Of, of yesteryear, because he's a neocon. Don't even know what he looks like, half the people that talk about him. They couldn't recall him, they couldn't pick him out in a crowd, but they know who Trump is. It's very funny to see that. It's one part struggle to maintain political relevancy, uh, it, which, you know, he desperately needs. You know, if you're going to have book deals and go to the luncheons for $500 a plate, uh, as the maverick, the Republican that stood against evil Trumpler or something like that, then you need to be out there, at least to some degree, in the news. You need to have your name out there. People need to know sort of that you exist. Uh, and that was waning, and so he has to come out and say dumb shit again. He's come out, I think, if I remember correctly, one of his main oppositions to Trump, at least insofar as he said, I think one of his main oppositions was on immigration. It's, well, we don't need a wall. We don't need to defend the border because, you know, fuck borders and laws and shit like that. You know, we should, we should just all get along with the bong, the Yoko Ono style, and that will actually work in the world and won't result in the usurpation and degradation of Western civilization and its inevitable replacement. Now, that'll never happen. The civic structure of the first world wouldn't fall apart completely as literally everybody comes in because there's nothing to stop them and there's no reason not to. 
that wouldn't happen. No, it'll be all hunky dory and shit. And, you know, demographics will definitely not change either, uh, leading to any form of social alienation. People like Jeff Flake, though, they make a lot of money off of illegals. You know, people who are like corporate Republicans are worse than the Democrats. The Democrats, at least, they put on the facade of, of like giving a shit about like the poor little kids in Guatemala or something. Like, oh, look at these pictures. It's tear jerking. We must open the border. And, and they do that sort of thing. With the Republicans, it's worse because they sort of try to pretend it, but it doesn't come off as authentic. Like, it's not as believable because really what it's about is filling sweatshops and apple farms. It's really what it's about apple orchards, uh, to get people to come and do labor for, you know, under the table work, you know, the, basically the old trope about people sitting outside of Home Depot in the morning, or something like that. Hey, I'll pay you on, I'll pay you $5 an hour under the table to do brute labor for me. You're here illegally, you can take some of that money, you're going to send it back to your family, that remittance will be worth a hell of a lot down there, they have a decent life, you know, it's, it's no disrespect for them, I mean, definitely hard workers, it's just, it's being enabled by the politicians who feed off of the issue like heroin. And they're totally addicted to their uh, their uh, sort of uh, malcontent with regards to the border. They constantly talk about it as a wedge issue, but then when it comes push comes to shove, they don't do anything about it. Jeff Flake is one of them. He's like a Ted Cruz. Like was Ted Cruz? I think it was him. He was handing out like toys to little illegal children and stuff at the border. And Rubio, he's like, oh, we're gonna think of the children and stuff. And it's just so cringy. It's just so fucked up. You can care about people in other countries. How about we just uh, stop bombing them for once? I think we could uh, close the border and we'd still look a lot more humanitarian and friendly at that point. If we stop killing people overseas. See, that's considered pie in the sky. That's the opinion that's considered out there or unworkable. It just can't work. It can't work that you can spend a few billion dollars to shut our border and make it like safe and secure while also saving money not bombing random people overseas and generating terrorists. And that doesn't make any sense as a foreign policy, say both the Democrats and Republicans. And Jeff Flake is right along with them. No, he hates Trump's populism. Because if populism takes hold, I guess it'll reduce his friends' profit margins. That's about all. Peace out.